did you grow up in the middle of nowhere? I don't mean nowhere. I just mean the kind of place where you could live your entire life and never encounter a celebrity. The kind of place where you're as famous as anyone you're ever likely to meet. And if so, did you ever think it was a little bit odd that your local radio DJ always had these megastar celebrities just popping in to have a chat? Stay tuned, when we return we're going to have a special guest star in the studio. Yes, it's my good friend Madonna, and she's here to talk about her new album and upcoming live tour. Well, it's quite possible that they were never there at all. Your DJ has never met that person. You were being lied to. What your DJ was doing was making use of something called an open-ended interview. Let me explain. This is an example of an open-ended interview, and it dates from 1972. This was something that was only made available to radio stations and DJs, and by using the contents of this, you can pretend to interview Al Green. Now, in this set, you get a 12-inch LP as well as a script. And as the sleeve states, you ask your questions from the script, and Al gives his answers from the record. Now, for this particular one, the appropriate music tracks have also been included on the disc, so all the DJ has to do is to ask the right questions at the right time, and he can fill up 45 minutes with an Al Green interview special. Now, there's a locked groove halfway through each side of the disc, and this is where you'd have an advert break. You'd also do the same whilst you flipped the record. Now, on the back of the cover, it suggests that you might want to use those breaks to shorten the interview down to fit in with your schedule. Open-end or open-ended interview discs were the radio station's little secret for many years. Here's a Beatles one, for example, and I'm sure with this one you would have got plenty of excited kids running down to the local radio station when they heard the Beatles being interviewed live on air, only to be told, oh yeah, I'm sorry, you've just missed them. These fake interview discs continued on into the CD age, but I suspect nowadays with press junkets and Zoom chats and what have you, there's no need for them anymore, but I honestly don't know. But returning to this Al Green disc, I think most DJs worth their salt wouldn't have attempted to perform an interview live on air using a record. They'd have recorded it in advance to tape, just to get the timing perfect. But since I'm not a DJ and I've got no intrinsic salt value, I decided to interview Al Green in 1972 via this record. And here's how I got on. I hope you're enjoying the music this afternoon on WTFM, broadcasting to you straight from Upper Ramsbottom. The most rock and roll allowed by law. The Loop. FM 98, WLUP, Chicago. Now, again, for legal reasons, of course, got to point out, we are not the loop from Chicago. We just bought some of their old cartridges off eBay. Now, um, surprisingly, we're going to have a very special guest in the studio today. He's got a hit album out at the moment. Uh, You might know his name, Al Green. We're very pleased to have him here. I can see him at the other side there. He's waving to me. He's just putting his headset on. So we'll just listen to some Superman aerobics. And then straight after that, we're going to talk to Al Green. The best variety of rock and roll. The Loop. FM 98. WLUP. Chicago. The ground. Press as hard as you can. Press. I think it's best if we just cut that short because it was utter crap. The best music. WIHN. Hey, it's uh, Matt with you, along with our special guest, a great young artist, one of today's most popular singing stars, Al Green. He's all over the charts with his smash single and his top-selling album, Let's Stay Together. And we're happy to have him on the show. Go, Al! Oh, turn your mic on there, Al. Hi, this is Al Green, and it's good to be here together with you and in fact i brought my new album along and i'd like to play a few cuts out of it to see if you like it yeah i'm afraid we're gonna cut that one short there al we can't play the music on this uh, youtube channel due to the content mash issue so uh what a gas having such a, a smash hit huh well it feels crazy it, it feels i don't know you'll hear the difference 
you know, up to today. Well, you sure hear your, uh, sorry, you sh you sure hear the record. Well, it makes you feel good. Mm. I was sitting in a barber shop. I heard it on piano. Willie Mitchell, my producer. Yep, Willie. Yep, was, uh, yep. Playing yep. it here. He and Al Jackson. Oh, and Al, Al Jackson. Jackson is beating all up mm. the wall yep. and on the piano top and anywhere else he can find. Ooh. No, they said they didn't know. Okay. And they were just this playing is, this, is yeah, you know, this particular melody, and so I took a pen and paper and wrote the words down that go to the song and around the world. I believe uh, if it isn't, it should be togetherness. <laughs> oh, right on, and that'll get us into another song from your new album. Well, uh, one of the songs in the album is um, this particular one, uh, and the title is "So You're Leaving Me," and. I had the privilege of writing it myself. The background work is uh, done by myself. Well, it's a cut that I think you'll like. I want you to hear it. I'm so happy that we are together. Yeah, we are together, definitely. Not, not, I'm not just uh, looking at a record here. We thank you for joining us for Max Lucado's Easter special, and the angels were silent. Yeah, just a quick reminder, if anyone does know how to re-record over these cartridges, please get in touch. Anyway, back to the interview with Al Green. So it's Matt here again on WTFM. Back with one of the big men on the music scene whose records are going like crazy everywhere. Al Green, he's our special guest. Along with his great new album, Let's Stay Together, which is loaded with some very heavy songs. But then again, if you work someplace that's really exceptional, it's not unusual. So, you know, you just swell to the idea of being where you are. Yet, when you look back on the rough times, isn't it better that you had that experience? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. And, and, and they have a tendency sometimes to be um, misunderstanding, you see. Sal Sarong, waking you up on WIHN. So, Al, um, many of our popular singing stars have the same church choir background as you do. Dion Warwick, Aretha Franklin, Sarah Vaughan, and, and so many others. Got anything to From say? The fact that a lot that, that, that are, and I'm quite religious in fact, and this is because it, it turns out a lot of good people. Oh, um, can you say how that background has affected your own singing style? Well, for one thing, I sing, I, I display it every time I try to open my mouth to sing. What other sounds poured into those young ears when you were growing up and now come out as Al Green? Well, uh, Sam Cooke, for instance. Well, I, I dug James Brown for good, strong stand. He had a good, strong, solid stand like Yo, a never fell over. fella, Yo. which he is. <laughs> you know, and his music is sharp and snappy, you know, and really, you know, you know snappy like that you yeah, see yeah stuff. And, and, and then I, I dug um, Jackie Wilson for oh, yeah. voice Frequency. style yeah he had good voice style and his range he did have good, good voice style and these are the three people that influenced me the most I believe but what about your dynamite performing style can you account for that there's no way you can describe that I, I don't but my music is free music well that's, let's that's up. and that's the only way I could describe it is free music well, let's have some more of it right this there. This is a song no. that um, Eddie Floyd, good friend of mine, oh, in Eddie. Fact, yeah. <laughs> done some years back. And it's a thing called I've Never Found a Girl to Love Me Like You Do. And I hope you do. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you liked it. And this is yep. all green, and I'm that so glad we're together. I'm glad we're together. In reality, they're actually both, both here at the same time. In, in our studio here at Upper Ramsbottom. Radio M with the most music. It's getting closer, Radio M. It's uh, actually WTFM here. We've got one of the big talents in the world of music with us, Al Green. And uh, he's playing some of his songs from his best selling album, uh, Let's Stay Together. And he's rapping to us about his music. He's not actually rap rapping. I mean, talking. It's a kind of, this is an old thing that we're reading. Uh, he, rapping's going to come in the future. Uh, don't worry about that. Sort of like, like late seventies kind of thing. Anyway, he's he's talking about his early life, international success. Al, how do you write your songs? Where do you get your ideas from? I get my ideas from from above. It's the only place I could get them from. Well, upstairs. I can't write every day. I wish no. I could write every day, because if I could write every day, then I'd sit down and write about 20 hit singles, you mm, know, exactly. and I would sit back and relax and forget about it. 
you know? I just sit there and rock a while sometimes, you know, never knowing, ha never having any idea. And finally something comes along. Oh, uh, yeah, um... Yeah, I wrote, I'm tired of being alone about five o'clock one morning. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you know, that. And, uh, that I, I've forgotten some of the best ideas in the world, I believe. That's a shame. trying to remember because I was... 25, 30 miles from home in the car, no pen, no paper, no, ta no tape. No iPhone? You know, and I was speeding like mad trying to get home the right oh, no, down, and when I got there, I lost the whole thing. Oh. You know, when I learned to oh. play something, then I don't forget that very easy. So how did you happen to write the next one about well, Ju Judy? my guitar and I, Larry Lee, was in um, Columbus, Georgia. Here come this fine young lady off Ooh. the bus stepping down looking like yeah. a queen. Oh, yeah. yeah I know <laughs> and she mean. was very, very attractive. I mean, unusually yeah, attractive. I think she was from a bit New York. Weird. Inappropriate. And we both like no. standing up with our mouths open, you know. So no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah so it sounds a bit creepy. When we got to the hotel, we, you know, pick up this idea yeah. to write about what excited you most during the day, and that was Judy. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen her again. We have never seen her. Yeah. Al Green. Probably and called I think the police. We should stay together. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Radio M. Radio M. And um, for the future, Al, what's the ultimate goal? I'd like to. I, I, I want to always write, to always compose. And, and by traveling, I think I'll just die. So I might as well just die singing. <laughs> Well, you'll kill a lot of people before you do, that's for sure. It's been a gas wrapping with you. It's been my pleasure, believe me. And I'm glad that uh, we could be together today. Yeah, I'm glad we could really, really be together in the same studio. Good evening, Charleston. Well, I think that went pretty well. Pretty sure no one could figure out that we were playing a record there. So, yes, there you go. That was the open-ended or open-end interview your local radio DJ's little secret. Well, one of them. Now, last time I played a weird record in a video, the star of it passed away the day the video went live on YouTube. Let's hope that didn't set a precedent. I don't really want to become known as the vinyl Grim Reaper. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.